Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about two times hard mode shard farming event. What do I do? What do you do? Uh, like mechanics, a couple of tips, a specific mechanic called rigging. What does world 10 look like? What are the shards? Should you farm them? Which shards should you farm? Should you refresh shards? Are you going to? I'm probably going to do a little bit. Questions like that. I think you get the idea. Without further ado, let's just jump into it. So here I've got my JP account. I'm just a little pleb, level 59. I think I can roll through everything that my um, my EN account can't roll through. Here I'm just going to give you guys a quick preview of like the map 10 which is just another 15 stages and a boss at the end. It's pretty straightforward. However, what I do want to talk about is actually, where is it? Uh, this, I don't know if it's actually in here, but there's a particular, there's two items that you're going to need a lot of, which is kind of like the equivalent of the, um, of the swords. So I think it might be a map 11, but like this bad boy right here, this amulet thing, you're going to need a lot of these guys. Just be forewarned, a little bit of fortune telling before we get into it, I think. So let me just stop there and say the upcoming reset. So it's actually reset time in about like two hours for me. On the reset, we will get the level cap raised to 88. And then we're going to get hard mode two times on the reset. I think 10 hours after that, we will get world 10, which is what you're seeing on the screen now. So yeah, world 10, there isn't too much going on. The EX dungeon, the extreme dungeon is actually in world 11. So we can actually talk about it another day. So I'm going to flip over to the hard mode and we have Misaki, for you and Ninon. So Ninon's a pretty big addition to be honest. But before anything, I want to talk about something called rigging, which is really, really interesting concept that I actually learned about in the main pre-con discord. Shout out to you guys in PVP chat. You guys just apparently talk about everything, including rigging hard mode shots. So to explain the premise of rigging, what it is, is essentially you have two ways of clearing a stage, right? So if I was to go into this Saren stage, I would actually be able to skip ticket it or I would be able to manual it. What rigging is, is one day before the start of the event. So right now, actually, what you can do is that you can actually rig the next stage to be a guaranteed shard so that you will 100% get two times shard on the next clear. Now, how do you do this? And it's pretty straightforward. So it's that you run the stage until you get a drop from the character. So let's actually get into the stage and I will show you what happens. So I'm just going to run this Saren stage manually. And what's going to happen is I'm going to watch for the shard drop at the very end. And if the shard drops, then I'll force quit the game. If not, then it is whatever, right? So I'm just gonna slow that down a bit because it's lagging the heck out of my computer. Or I have four items right now. Saren is here. What I need to see is when I kill Saren, do I get a fifth item? And if so, that is likely the Saren shard. So let's see what happens here. I'm hopefully gonna take her out with this. Uh, okay, that's four and then that's five. Okay, that's five. So you see the, it went from four to five from when the Saren died. So what happens now is that if I actually exit the stage, like force quit or whatever, and if I redid this stage, I would get the exact same drops, including that Saren shard. However, what's interesting is that clearing a stage via manual mode, which is what we're doing now versus skip tickets is actually different. So what I'm really trying to say is if I exited this and went in as a manual again, I would get the exact same drops. However, if I exited this and went in with a skip ticket, I would get different different drops. So essentially what I could do is I now know that my next shard is a Saren shard. So I could actually skip ticket three times to clear all of my Saren stages today. And then when the reset rolls over to the two times hard mode shard farming, I can actually run Saren stage manually to guarantee that hard shard drop, except this time I'll be getting two times of it. So essentially what you've done is you've actually rigged the next drop the next manual run of this to be a Saren shard. You've rigged it from the day before in which you would normally get like one Saren shard to make sure that tomorrow when there is a two at times event on, you will actually get two shards. And of course there are some days where you won't get like hard shards and that just means that you can't rig it. So that's just, that's just how it is. Hopefully that made sense. I know it's a little bit hard to get your head around, but here's like the summary. If you don't really get the theory, like kind of just follow these steps if you're really feeling it. Number one, you run a hard stage manually until the very end. Number two, watch your item drop counter and the boss monster, which is the character. So in this case, the Saren. Number three, you need to check whether when you kill the character, the Saren in this case, whether you actually get an extra item or not. If you do get an extra item, that's a Saren shard. If not, then there is no Saren shard. Now this is where it branches off. Now number four, if you did get a Saren shard, like what happened to me here, my counter went from four to five, you force quit the game and you lose two stamina. After you come back into the game, you should still have three clears left. And then so you clear all three of them with skip tickets. Step five, you 
you wait for the two times event to start and then you manual it to guarantee the Saren shard. Except this time you won't guarantee only one Saren shard, but you'll get two because it's a two times drop. If we go back to step four, if you didn't get the shard, then you just need to finish the stage and then try it again. In your second run, if you didn't get it again, then you go for your third run. If you therefore got it in the second run, then you would exit and then you would skip ticket twice. If you don't get it in run one, two or three, it just means that you can't rig it for tomorrow. I know it's very late to talk about rigging since the, by the time you see this video, you will already be in it. But to be honest, guys, I'm sorry. I forgot about rigging until like this kind of popped up. All right, guys, hopefully that gives you a pretty good summary of what rigging is. And I kind of want to just move on and show you guys what I'm feeling like farming. So if you guys see here, I've just finished the stage and there is going to be a Saren drop. Hopefully, I hope I didn't make a fool of myself. All right, next. And the Saren shard is right there. Oh baby, that's what I'm talking about. So again, if this was a normal day, I would have forced closed this, lost two stamina, skip ticketed three times, wait till tomorrow, and then run in manual mode so that I would get these exact drops again. I'm sorry I repeated it like five times. It's actually just quite a little, it's a little bit hard to understand. All right, in terms of priorities, so this is actually really interesting because like, I think depending on like how hardcore of a player you are, you'll definitely be prioritizing different things. And if you are like arena or CB focused, right? So first let's talk about Cockroach. So Kokoro, like if you got her at three star, I recommend you don't really farm her unless you're hardcore. If you're hardcore, you're probably going to want to farm like every single like node I'm going to be talking about. If I could kind of like retrace back to that, I would say that you should still farm Kokoro, but not refresh for her. Kokoro is typically left at three stars, especially for clan battlers. And so you don't really like, it's not really high priority to go beyond three stars. If you still don't have her at three stars, she is a high priority. These two, if you're really keen on like preparing for arena, yeah, sure. But I wouldn't do it right now. Again, for you hardcore players, you guys can definitely refresh these guys for like the unique equipment and all that but for me personally i'm not going to be doing these guys next we've got ray yui and saren let me start off with yui and yui is kind of in the same situation as kokoro eventually you do want her to five star or six star or yui or whatever right but at this point she's just not that good past three star i think that three stars is a really good stopping point and i probably wouldn't put refreshes into this ray and saren are really interesting saren if you're kind of like a casual or free to play or like a low spender or kind of thing i probably wouldn't dump into saren like for the most but Saren's utility at three stars is already enough. There are a lot more higher priorities such as Ray. So Ray is actually quite a good and probably going to be a very cool unit in the upcoming clan battle. The upcoming clan battle is probably going to favor like the frontliners in which Ray is one of them. Ray also has two nodes so you can actually farm her up quite fast. I personally will be refreshing on Ray and Saren but a Saren only because I'm a madman and I'm going for Saren 5. If you don't have Saren yet though I would definitely refresh for Saren especially because there are already two Saren nodes now. And guys I just want to touch on the topic of refresh refreshing if you guys are gonna ever refresh it's gonna be now during 2x events any of them is like when you would be refreshing like you wouldn't refresh during like dungeon mana or like grotto or whatever right back to it clan battlers ray refresh saren if you don't have her or if you're a madman like me next we've got pecorin lima and mimi pecorin same deal as the other starters i quite like her at three stars she's gonna be good at five and six or whatever but like not right now too many high priorities such as lima if you're a pvp -er, lima is pretty big especially for your Reno or Ninon Com. If you're hardcore on PvP, you already know that you're refreshing on Lima. Mimi is quite good, especially to refresh on, because if you do and you are lucky enough, you could end up with a five-star Mimi after the Lyrical Adventures event. I personally am going to be refreshing on Mimi and Lima at least. Okoro, Misaki, and Ninon. If you are a diehard PvP player, Ninon is a refresh for sure. What is actually really awesome is that Ninon is actually getting that second node in World 10, so you'll be actually able to farm her way faster than you were before. Misaki for me is a skip, like unless you really, really like her, I just don't find her that useful. Kurumi, Mifuyu, again, they're kind of like, okay, Shiori, I think she is, it's, a lot of people are going to have four star or three or four star Shioris, right? Now, this is a really interesting point. If you just hit the Shiori, like four star, I would say that you could actually deprioritize the Shiori because it's actually 150 shards to actually get her to the next star. There are a lot of other characters such as like Rei, Eriko, and uh, Shinobu that you could get to three stars. I'm sure the rationale is pretty straightforward. These guys, when they get three stars, they get new bond levels, and that is just a massive power spike. So if I scroll back here shiori i will refresh but at a lower priority because i just hit her four star and i'm not really keen on going all the way and refreshing that much kurumi i'm not i'm not that arena focused and mifuyu is a no for me i just don't use her enough next we've got yui i've talked about yui already mahiru i don't use her enough and shizuru i'm going to be refreshing her but only because i'm an idiot also i would really like another way to counter like the reno and the ninon comps and shizuru is a goddess for that so you guys heard that right shizuru counters reno ninon stuff like that pvp i'm 
going to go for it just because like I kind of want it. As a player that is focused on clan battle, you can actually just completely ignore this to be honest. Just like how you can ignore those Ninon shards. Next one, Pekarin, I've already covered. Eriko and Shinobu. These two, I am going to refresh like crazy. I really like Eriko. I think she is a very, very solid damage dealer. I have her almost at three stars and I'm going to go for the four star. Shinobu, same deal, except I guess you could say that she is probably lower priority for me because she's not really a... I reckon Shinobu performs well at three star. It gives her enough like kind of the sustain just to kind of like live through all of that bull <laughs> that like the bosses actually put you through. I think the stamina that you could be putting into Shinobu can be put elsewhere. But again, if you're a hardcore CV player, you probably are going to be dumping and refreshing these two nodes. Next, we've got Rei again. I'm definitely refreshing. Yuki, I think I will farm, but I won't refresh because again, I'm more clan battle oriented. Yuki is actually quite a core unit, especially for like the Reno and Ninon comps and even outside of that. Now, here's an interesting one, Akino. I am going to farm the heck out of Akino. Akino, she is a real sleeper. Everybody be sleeping on her. So with that in mind, I'm going to be refreshing for her as much as I can. If you already have her at three star, however, I would definitely put her at like a, on a lower scale. She has like a similar kind of priority to Saren. You really want to juice out your damage dealers first, like Ray and Eriko. But I personally don't have Akino, so I'm going to farm the heck out of her. Next, we've got Aoi, Mimi, and Saren. So Saren, you already know it. I'm going to go for five star just because it's a bit Mimi. And then we've got Mimi, who I'm also going for five star for, especially after that event. So I'm going to be refreshing on these two. I don't use Aoi too much, so unfortunately, I'll be passing on that one. Well, 10, I'm going to be passing on Misaki and Mifuyu. I just don't use them, and I'm going to be farming the heck out of Ninon. All right, guys, I think generally you guys kind of know like where my head is at for this one. If there are any PvP units, there actually aren't that many PvP units in here. For clan battle, there are actually so many bloody units that you need to refresh on. So you guys need to be like a little bit more smart in your spending. So of course, depending on your spending, you can go like down the priorities, right? So for clan battle, I would say Eriko is top priority, Ray is top priority, and then you got Shiori is top priority, unless you're like really far off. And even then, to be honest, I'll probably get that. Saren, if you don't have her, I'll probably actually, you know what? I'm just going to put a list like that way, that way. So that, uh, sorry guys, this just kind of feels a little bit disorganized and I think you guys would appreciate like a more structured list. All right, guys, that should be enough time. I think that's the end of the video. Enjoy the hard mode farming, but watch your gems because this is actually going to cost quite a fair bit. I'm going to wrap up this video now because it's already gotten like, oh, exceptionally long. All right, guys, I got a secret message and that is Saren 5 or bust. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. it. Tells me that you guys have made it to the end and I really appreciate that because I put a lot of hours into these videos. Guys, I don't think there's much more to be said. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video or it's helped you, consider like liking, sharing, you know the works. And don't forget about the rigging for the next hard shard mode farming. Honestly, I'm still umming and eyeing if I can be stuffed, but it's just a little bit of work for an extra shard or two. Honestly, if you have a little bit of time and you want to like min-max that two times event, I would definitely do it. Me personally, I freaking forgot, so. <laughs> Right, no more rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.